eyes this morning. Let's stand together and worship. Our God loves us. He's for us. So let's sing to him this morning.
Well, good morning. Welcome to worship. We're so glad that you're here today. Um, I want to share with you what's going to be our memory verse, kind of our key verse for this month. And we've got it on the screen for you. Let's, let's read this together. It's John 1.14. Let's read it aloud. All right, here we go. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen His glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. And we're getting ready to go into a sermon series where we're going to be looking at who Jesus is in his own words. And in particular, we're going to be looking at, at those I am statements. Jesus gave us a handful, about seven or so metaphors that over the next few weeks, I want us to take hold of as we begin 2024 together. I, I really hope and pray that as a church family, that we will lean in to who Jesus is, that we'll be reminded of why we're here to worship him and why we go into the week ahead sharing the hope of Jesus Christ with others. I know folks watching on television, watching online, and there may be, you may have friends, neighbors, classmates, maybe they are not followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, now is a great time for you to begin to pray for them, invest in them, even invite them to come to church with you, but also don't forget for you to look for opportunities for you yourself just to point them to the Lord Jesus. You know, this is a great time of year, by the way. You could, you could just buy someone a Bible. And, and a great place to start would just be asking them, hey, just read through the Gospel of John and take note of who Jesus is. In fact, if you don't already have a Bible plan, a Bible reading plan you're reading through in the new year, I encourage you, take the month of January and read through the Gospel of John. Anyway, well, I'm glad you're here today. I'm gonna to pray for us and we're gonna to continue to worship. Father, thank you for your love for us. We were just singing about that. And of course, we know that you have demonstrated your love for us in sending the Lord Jesus into our lives. And Lord Jesus, you took on human flesh. You made yourself known to us, and because of you, we can know God. And so, Holy Spirit, I pray that you will just fill each and every one of us. I pray that you will be at work in our lives and in the lives of others, that, Lord Jesus, many, many, many people in 2024 would come to put their faith in you. Oh, Lord Jesus, we give you praise. That's why we're here today. I pray for those that may be watching, and I pray that they will join in with us in worship. And I pray for anyone in this community who is looking for a church home that they would know that we have a seat for them. Lord Jesus, it's not because of us. We're not just another club. We're not just another thing to do on a day of the week. We are your church, church of the living Lord and Savior, you, Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray today, as we begin this new week, that we will offer ourselves to you in worship. In Christ's name we ask it, amen. Welcome to worship.
For the promises you've kept And every need you've met Lord, I'm so grateful You were with me every step And I never will forget When I think of how you've blessed me How your head, it's never let me go
Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we do thank you. Father, in fact, as we've been reminded today, we have so very much to thank you for. And Father, perhaps I've been guilty of not really taking enough time the past week or two and just remembering how blessed I am. Father, thank you for your many, many blessings. Father, we don't exactly know. I certainly don't know what the next 360 days, however many left of 2024, will hold. But Father, as we've been reminded, you will be absolutely good every day of the year. So, Father, I pray that we will know we have an invitation for you to bring to you our needs, our cares, our worries, our anxieties, our sins, believing that you are able to overcome. You are able to do a work in our lives. Father, I pray now as we open the scriptures together that the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart will be pleasing in your sight, O Lord God, because you are my rock and my redeemer. And we pray, Lord Jesus, that we will indeed marvel even more at who you are as we study your words to us over these next few weeks. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being in our lives. Lead us now as we open the word together. In Jesus' name we ask it, amen. God bless you. Be seated, and thank you all for that time of worship. Well, you know... um, Over these past few weeks, you know, you hear during the Christmas season especially, 
And you're kind of, that's maybe kind of wearing off for you now, right? Even here at church, you know, Christmas decorations. And thank you, by the way, to the men and women who helped get those tucked away just the other day. And um, uh, we're, we, we got most of ours now put away. But if you think back on the past few weeks, the movies, the songs, I don't know if you noticed something, but a lot of them, they'll talk about believing, won't they? In fact, they'll almost talk about believing as if believing is enough itself. But see, here's the reality. You have to have something or someone to believe in, amen? You, you have to know what and who you believe in, and you have to know why you believe in it. And over these next few weeks, as we look at some of these key passages in the Gospel of John, and I'm serious, I encourage you, read through the Gospel of John, all the chapters. In fact, you could read a chapter a day, take the weekend off, and you'll finish it by the end of January near about, all right? So I encourage you, take some time to read through the Gospel of John. You'll find that you'll be able to read through it rather quickly. And, and what you're gonna see in the Gospel of John is the Gospel of John is all about believing. It's all about believing. But really, it's very much about knowing why and who we believe in. Because, you know, that is, that is central. You know, you have to know why and what and who you believe. Now, tomorrow evening, by the way, is the college football championship. And even today, there'll be some games that some of us are going to be tuning into, all right? And, and I got to thinking about something, the whole idea of, of do you know why you do something? For instance, do you know why you come to church? Do you know why you sing these songs? Do you know why you say you're gonna serve the Lord in 2024? Well, I got to thinking about it in the context of football. And, and, and you watch a game today, all right, or you watch tomorrow night's game, you're gonna notice something, that the quarterback, oftentimes, if you listen close, in the midst of all the chatter, the quarterback typically before the ball is hiked, does not say hike. He doesn't say, give it to me now. <laughs> he doesn't say, I want the ball. He doesn't say one, two, three. He usually says a three-letter word. It's almost universal amongst quarterbacks. You know what the word is? He says what? Hut. He says hut, H-U-T. I, I thought that was interesting. I actually found a New York Times article that a couple years ago actually did some research on why is it, and, and do quarterbacks know why they say the word hut? Why do they say that? Most quarterbacks, by the way, do, they don't have a clue why they say the word hut. They just do it because everybody else has done it. I mean, maybe, maybe you come to church just because it's what your family's always done. Maybe it's because it's a New Year's resolution for you, all right? Maybe you don't really know why you do it. Maybe you don't really understand it at all. One, one, one football professional player said this. He says, well, I guess it's better than yelling now or go. <laughs> Joe Theismann, some of you remember Joe Theismann? The Washington football great quarterback of yesteryear that so many of us that are Washington fans long for those years, Amen. Well, this is what he said. He, 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 he looked back on his career and he believes that he probably said the word hut over 10,000 times. He said this quote, I've been hutting my way through football for 55 years. But this is what the great Joe Theismann said. He said, I haven't a clue why I said the word hut. <laughs> Eli Manning, that's a little bit more current for, for, for some of you. Eli Manning, this is what he said, quote, I think our family's always been hut guys. But it's a good question. Why do we say that? And, and actually, there was a linguist that did some research on this. His name was Ben Zimmer. And he, and he actually believes and came to the conclusion that, that the reason that quarterbacks say the word hut is it goes back to military days. In fact, a, a lot of football players and coaches coming off of World War II after the 40s and the early 50s because of their service in the military, he thinks that had something to do with it because oftentimes in the military, you'll hear a drill sergeant say, a tin hut. And, 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 and the other idea was they thought it's because it's kind of, it's kind of guttural. It kind of sounds like a, like a call to action. Loved ones, here's my point in sharing with you that little story. You see, if I was a quarterback, I think I would kind of be interested in knowing why I'm saying what I'm saying. Especially like Joe Theismann, if I'd done it 10,000 times, right? But here's a much more serious question. Do you know why you ought to follow Jesus? Do you know why you ought to worship Jesus? Do you know why Jesus is absolutely worthy of your life, your devotion, your worship? 
Do you know why we ought to exalt the Lord Jesus Christ as followers of him? Why we ought to worship Jesus today? Why this church is committed to making Jesus known amongst our neighbors and the nations? You need to know why you believe in Jesus as the Christ, as the Son of God, as the Lord of Lords, as the King of Kings. This, you need to know why it is so critically, absolutely life-saving, eternal importance to believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So as we get going in 2024, I want you to hear, not my words, I want you to hear Jesus' own words of who he claimed to be. And, and I'm gonna go to one particular passage today to start with, and next week we'll begin looking at these seven metaphors, the famous I am statements of Jesus in the Gospel of John. Uh, the Gospel of John. But today, look with me at John chapter eight. John chapter eight in your Bible, Starting in verse 53, Jesus is having a conversation. And in this conversation, he does not mince words. And I want you to see right out the gate, as we begin this series of sermons, I want you to see who Jesus claims to be. Because some people will say out there, Jesus never claimed to be God. Some people will say Jesus was just, uh, he, he was just a, a great prophet. He was just another great religious leader. But Jesus claimed to be much more. Some people will say, well, actually, you know, uh, this was all made up about him. They were just lying or they were just embellishing it. What you're going to see over these next few weeks is why Jesus Christ absolutely ought to be worshipped by you and me as the Lord of our lives. Look with me. John chapter 8, verse 53. Are you greater, Jesus has asked, are you greater than our father Abraham who died? Because even now, Three major world religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, all trace back. They're all considered by sociologists as Abrahamic religions. And so Jesus is being asked, are you saying you're greater than our father Abraham and the prophets who died? Who do you, here's a great question, I underlined it in my Bible. Who do you make yourself out to be, Jesus? Jesus answered, if I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my Father who glorifies me, of whom you say, he's our God, but you have not known him. You know, that's a great thought right there. Do you really know God? Jesus says in the Bible here, I know him. If I were to say that I do not know him, I would be a liar like you. But I know him, and I keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad, verse 57. So the Jews said to him, you're not yet 50 years old. And you've seen, and have you seen Abraham? Look at what Jesus says, verse 58. Truly, truly, I say to you, and here it is. Before Abraham was, I am. Everybody say, I am. I am. And you go back, you go back to the book of Exodus when Moses asked Ask God, who are you? He says, what does he say? I am. Right here, make no mistake about it. Here's what I want you to get today, number one. Jesus claimed to be God. Don't miss that. Jesus never claimed just to be a great teacher. Jesus never claimed just to be a religious leader. He claimed to be God. If anybody ever tells you different, you just can go to this passage right here. He says, I am. So this is why the next verse says, they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out the temple. The reason they picked up stones was because Jesus was claiming to be God, and that's blasphemy to them. If anyone claims to be God and he's not God, that's blasphemy. But Jesus claims to be God. You see, for those of us who are believers, we need to know and get it down who Jesus is. As his disciples, we need to know who Jesus is and who he claims to be, loved ones. The real question is not just who he claimed to be. I think that's pretty obvious. Jesus claimed to be God. Jesus equals God. Amen? Jesus uses those same words that God used in speaking to Moses in Exodus 3.14. Same words as Isaiah 41, 4. Same words as Isaiah 43, 13. 23 total times we find our Lord Jesus use those two words, I am, in John's gospel. 
He actually uses it twice. John, the Apostle John records it twice. Jesus saying, I am in the book of Revelation. And in, the seven, in seven of these I am statements, Jesus, claiming to be God, gives us these metaphors. And I wanna just give you a preview of what you're gonna be hearing over the next few weeks. Number one, I am the bread of life. Everybody say bread of life. Bread of life, that's in John chapter six. I am the light of the world. Everybody say light of the world. Light of the world, that's in John 8, 12. I am the door of the sheep, that's in John 10. I am the good shepherd, that's also in John 10. I am the resurrection and the life. I can't wait to get to that one. You're gonna have to wait till next month for that one. That's in John chapter 11, Jesus said that. I am the resurrection and the life. And then he said this in John 14. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And then lastly, in, in, in John, what we'll look at is in John 15, he said, I am the vine. I am the vine. By the way, that sermon, that sermon will lead us into the month of March where I'm hoping and praying that we're gonna enter into a 21 day period of prayer as a church family. That's coming in March. That'll lead us all the way up to Palm Sunday. More to come on all that, amen? I, don't, I, don't, I know it was just Christmas. I don't wanna push you to Easter too fast, but you need to know, when it comes to the Lord Jesus Christ, there ain't that much time between Christmas and Easter, amen? Amen, and aren't you thankful for it? Aren't you thankful that because of who Jesus is, because of his birth and his incarnation, and because of his resurrection, Jesus is Lord. Make no mistake about it, amen? Jesus is Lord. Say that together with me. Jesus is Lord. As you're leaning into this new year, my prayer is as a church family, as a community, as we take in God's word together that we can know without a shadow of a doubt who Jesus is. He claimed to be God. He claimed to be God, but here's the real question. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Do you believe Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God? The key verse, key verse in, John, in the Gospel of John, it's at the end of the Gospel. The Gospel of John chapter 20. Let me read two verses uh, for you today. Verse 30. This is John 20, verse 30. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may believe, so that you may believe, everybody say believe, believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. That's why it was written, so that you would believe. But what does it mean to believe? What does it mean to believe? Does it mean to believe in the historical person of Jesus? To accept the fact that a man named Jesus lived and walked this earth at some point in time? Does it just mean to admire him? Does it just mean to emulate him? Does it mean to take up some revolutionary cause? Does it mean to entertain warm, fuzzy feelings or to venerate him as more than human or devote time and energy in order to please him? What does it mean? What does it really mean to believe in Jesus as Lord? What well, comes from a Greek word that, that, that literally means to acknowledge the truth as truth and to trust, to rely upon, to derive confidence in something or someone. You see, what it means when I believe, believe means this, it means that I trust as truth and rely upon that truth. You know, the word believe appears something like 85 times in the Gospel of John. Multiple times in several chapters. In fact, in fact, yesterday I just went through the Gospel of John and I was just underlying, underlining and highlighting places where I would see the word believe. And, and, and I would encourage you, if, as you're reading through the Gospel of John in the month of January, Take, take a pen or a pencil or a highlighter and just, just circle or underline the word believe or believes or believing. Some, you know, just, just take note of how you see that through the gospel. It means, it means that we're to trust him, that we're to rely upon him. I, I'm just gonna go ahead and give you some examples right now. Uh, John chapter one, verse seven. John the Baptist, uh, he came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. John wasn't the light but came to bear witness about the light. 
John chapter one, verse 50. Jesus answered, because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? Oh, you will see greater things than these. Over in chapter two, that's where Jesus does his first sign. That's where he turned water into wine at the wedding in Cana of Galilee. And he, and he says, and it says that his disciples believed in him. Oh, in the same chapter, uh, the Bible says, when therefore he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered they remembered that Jesus had said, and they that he had said that he would be uh, risen from the dead, that he'd resurrect, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. John chapter three, just the third chapter. Very, chapter one's got it. Chapter two's got it. Chapter three's got it in a couple different places. The Bible says that Jesus said, "Whoever believes, whoever believes in him, may have eternal life." For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And I've got verse after verse marked here. As you read the Gospel of John, you see over and over and over again the scriptures pointing us to believing in Jesus. And it's more than just head knowledge. It's more than just me kind of saying, oh, I believe. It means that I trust him. It means that I'm gonna rely upon him. So here's, here's, here's a bottom line for you today. Believe that Jesus is the Christ, that he's the son of God. John chapter 21, verse 25. Now there are many other things that Jesus did. And the apostle John says, or if, if every, I love this verse, if every one of them were written, I suppose the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. The Apostle John says, he says, listen, if I were to have written down every single one of the examples of what Jesus did to show and to prove that he's God, there would, <laughs> the world itself wouldn't be able to hold all the books it would take. The Library of Congress in Washington, D.C., it wouldn't be big enough. Put it into our context today, you know, because we, a lot of times now everything's digitized, Right? In fact, uh, you'll, you'll be able to, you go to a lot of libraries now, they're, more, they're almost just like museums for books and coffee shops. Because now you can read, you can, you, you can access almost anything at the library you can access online. But I'll tell you what, I'll, Jesus, Jesus is so great and mighty that I, want, I wonder if the Apostle John wouldn't say, you know what, even all the technology in the world all those megabytes or whatever computer folks call memory and all that stuff, you know, all the gig and all that stuff, there couldn't be enough gig in this world to really contain the majesty of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, loved ones, today, I hope you don't think this is too elementary for us because I find this. I find that when the going gets tough or my day just doesn't go like I kind of wanted it to go, that I need to go back to that faith like Jesus said to have, that childlike faith. And I think about how, <laughs> how, how it's so fun to be around our children at Christmas time and, and their excitedness and their belief and all that, right? Oh, loved ones, listen to me. Listen to me. Every day of the year ahead, every day of the rest of your life, you can marvel at the majesty of who Jesus is. And you have the opportunity to believe in him, to follow him, to trust him, to rely upon him. Oh, it's so elementary that it is absolutely essential for you and for me. Oh, I love that verse. Believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. You know, I wrote down some of the seven signs. As you're reading through the Gospel of John in the month of January, take note of those signs, seven of the miracles Jesus performed. In John chapter two, he turns the water into wine. In John chapter four, he heals the nobleman's son. In John chapter five, he cures a paralytic. In John chapter six, he feeds 5,000 men. And also in John chapter six, he walks on water. In John chapter nine, he heals a blind man. In John chapter 11, he raises raises Lazarus from the dead. You see, the reality is this, is throughout history, people have thought highly of Jesus 
but they've dismissed the notion that he was God. And that's really what I want to caution you about. We dare not have some silly notion that Jesus is a great man, yet fail to worship him as Almighty God. Amen? There have been those. Friends, I, I, honestly, I think, about, I think about the Virginian Thomas Jefferson. What an amazing writer and intellect he must have been. But he was one of those people that would have perhaps said Jesus was a great, great person, but he doubted, he doubted the supernatural. Jefferson even edited, maybe you've heard of this, even edited the four gospels as they retained the words of Jesus, but what he did is he excluded the miracles and his claims to be God. He said this, quote, we must reduce our volume to the simple evangelist wrote, he wrote this to John Adams. He told Adams that he would select the very words of Jesus only, commenting fragments of the most sublime edifice of morality which had ever been exhibited to man. He gave high praise to Jesus for his moral teachings, yet he refused to admit Jesus claimed to be God. With all due respect to the great intellect, and I know he's not here to defend himself of of Mr. Jefferson, I would say, Mr. Jefferson, Mr. Jefferson, we need to look closely at the Gospel of John and just marvel at Jesus' claims to be God because all of us, even the greatest of all intellects, even in the midst of our constitution and our declaration as Americans to declare our independence. Loved ones, I hope that you'll see that the greatest declaration you can make isn't just your independence as an American, but is your dependence as a Christian. Your dependence upon the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That's a lesson the Apostle Paul had to learn. That's a lesson the disciples of Jesus had to learn. They had to come to the point in their lives where they understood and they repented of their sins and being their own little petty God and realized that Jesus is the only one who deserves to be on the throne. Jesus indeed is Lord. So here's, here's, here's how we respond. We need to trust him as our personal Lord and Savior. You know, Jesus had conversations throughout the Gospels with people. I think about a particular conversation he had with, with a lady we just refer to as the woman at the well. This is in John chapter 4, verse 25. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, he who is called Christ when he comes, he will tell us all things. And this is what Jesus said to her. I who speak to you am he. Will you trust him? Do you trust him? You see, trusting in Jesus is a matter for me to take up every single day of my life, isn't it? Oh, yes, you put your faith, your trust in him. We, we baptize believers in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And if you've never been baptized as a believer in Jesus, man, let us know. I would love to be able to bear witness to seeing you baptized next Sunday in the baptistry here. And many of you give that testimony of your faith, your trust in Jesus. You've been baptized as a believer. But know this, know this. Just because the water dries off after your baptism doesn't mean that, that you claim your belief on one day and then you kind of go back to relying on your own wits the rest of your life. Every single morning you and I wake up is a morning for you and I to wake up and say, Jesus, today I'm trusting you with my life. I'm trusting you with my loved ones. I'm trusting you with my well-being. I'm trusting you with all that I am. Because you see, Jesus is enough. What you're going to see in these weeks to come is in Jesus' own words is Jesus is going to be letting us get to know him again. Some of us, for the first time, some of us, it's going to be like going down memory lane. For instance, Jesus tells us, I'm the bread of life. As bread sustains physical life, so Christ offers and sustains my spiritual life. He says, I'm the light of the world. To a world lost in darkness, Christ offers himself as a guide. Maybe you're here today and, and you have a lost family member, a lost friend, and, and, and it's like they, 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 they need the light of Jesus in their life, and you keep praying for them, loved one. Let us not grow weary in praying for the lost, amen? 
You might be watching today on television. You just stumbled upon this. You're waiting for a ball game or something to come on, or you just turned it on and it popped up, or you're maybe in a bar somewhere, and, 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 or you're at an exercise place working on your New Year's resolution, and this just happens to be on TV today where you're working out. But you need to know Jesus is the light of the world. He says, I'm the door of the sheep. Jesus protects his followers just as a shepherd would lay himself down to protect his flock from predators. He's the good shepherd. Jesus is to, he's committed. He's not, gonna, he's not gonna be some far off God. He's committed to your welfare, to watching over you. He's the resurrection and the life. You know, death is not final the final word for those in Christ. I think back down, I think about the fact just down, what is it, just down Patterson here. If you go out that way, if you live out that way, in fact, you probably don't pay attention to it hardly. You, you probably know there's a KFC down there. There's a, there's a McDonald's down there. You notice I'm talking about food. It's probably getting close to noon. Um, you start, but you know what? Down there on the right, there's a big, huge cemetery. And all of us end up there sooner or later, don't we? You need to know you can have hope. Jesus said, I'm the resurrection and the life. You need to know Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the source of all truth and knowledge of God. He's the only way to knowing God. And then he's not gonna let you go through your Christian life depending just on your own strength. That's why he says in John 15, I'm the vine. You attach yourself to Christ He enables his life to flow in and through us. I think one of the issues, and that's a good one to end on when we get to that in John 15, is so often if we're not careful as evangelical Christians, we'll we'll, 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 we'll sing our praise songs to the Lord. Emily, we'll, you know, Chad, we'll we'll offer praise, praise unto him. But Matt and Jordan, as soon as we're done singing those songs and you put the guitar down, we'll go right back into trying to gut it out, won't we? And Jesus says, you've got to depend on me and my strength. You've got to depend upon me. And that's why you turn the page or two, two, you get into Jesus saying, I'm going to give you another helper. And that's when he gives us the promise of the Holy Spirit. Oh, you've got a lot to look forward to as you read through the Gospel of John in the month of January. So the bottom line is this. You've got to trust him. You've got to trust him as your personal Lord and Savior. You've got, to, you've got to believe you can have life in his name. And here's the bottom line for you today. Jesus is the one for you, friend. He's the one for everyone. Jesus is the one. Jesus is the one that I need to look to as my Lord and Savior. I just, did a, I just did a little list here. And I know we've got a lot of different professions represented in the room. I hate to bring it up, but before long, you're gonna have to start working on your taxes because it's gonna be April before you know it and you just ended the tax year. And I'm all, I'm, I find it always interesting when you, when you fill out your tax form, it often asks you, doesn't it ask us at the end what your occupation is, Brother Darrell? Can I ask you what your occupation well, I want you to know whatever you do for a living in 2024, whatever you used to do, when someone says, hey, hey, so-and-so, well, what do you do? Wh- whatever you tell them, I want you to know Jesus is the one for you. And I made a little list. Here it is. To the artist, the Lord Jesus Christ is the one altogether lovely, the scripture tells us. To the architect, he's the chief cornerstone. To the baker, he's the living bread. To the banker, he's the hidden treasure. To the biologist, the Bible tells us Jesus is the life. To the builder, the Bible tells us he's the sure foundation. To the carpenter, he is indeed the door. To the doctor, the Bible says he's the great physician to the educators he's the great teacher to the engineer he's the new and living way to the farmer he's the sower and the lord of the harvest to the florist he's the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valley to the geologist the bible says he's the rock of ages to the horticulturalist he's the true vine to the judge oh friend he's the righteous judge the judge of all men to the juror he's the faithful and true witness to the jewel He's the pearl of great price. To the lawyer, he's the counselor, the lawgiver, the advocate. Matt, that's pretty good, isn't it? To the newspaper man, he's the good news of great joy. To the philanthropist, he's the one who loves and seeks to benefit all of mankind. He's the unspeakable gift. 
To the philosopher, he's the wisdom of God. To the preacher, he's the word of God. To the sculptor, he's the living stone. To the statesman, he is the desire of all nations. To the students, he is the incarnate truth. To the theologian, he's the author and the finisher of our faith. To the laborer, he's the giver of rest. To the sinner, listen to this one, he is the lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. To the Christian, he's the son of the living God, the Savior, the Redeemer, and Lord. Amen? So loved ones today, I just want to ask us to join together and lean into believing Jesus is all he said he is. So where is your trust today? Where is your trust today? I want to invite you, wherever you are right now, so I know some, some, some watching online or you're watching on television, but, but those in the room, I just wanna ask you to stand to your feet and just bow your heads with me in prayer. If you're watching from home, just, just bow your head with me right now if you would. And I'm gonna pray over us and I just wanna ask the praise and worship team's gonna come up. We're gonna sing a song together. And as this song is singing, if you're here today and you don't know without a shadow of doubt, you've put your faith and your trust in Jesus as your Lord, we wanna give you an opportunity to come to Christ. I'm gonna give you an opportunity. We've, we're, we're gonna, uh, I'm so thankful for the deacons that are being mobilized in this church. And we've, uh, you'll notice in your This Week at Grove, we have a couple deacons on deck, we're calling it each week. And, and those deacons are gonna be down front and available to us to pray with you. And then we'd like to get a little information because we wanna make sure we do a good job on following up with you. If you're watching online or on television, email us at info at groveav.com. If you're not comfortable coming down front, then go to our welcome center table after service and just say, I, I need to know more about what it means to trust Jesus. Maybe you wanna be baptized as a believer. We would love to talk with you about that. Maybe you're looking for a church to call your home away from home, which heaven's your real home eventually, but maybe you need a place to plug in and get involved and make Jesus known to others. Well, I don't, don't think you need to look any further than right here. Father, I pray right now, all through this room, all through this community, Lord, I know a lot of preachers have been preaching the word today. I pray, Father, we will just put our eyes on you, Lord Jesus. And I pray we would trust you. I pray as we move on in to 2024, we would know that today can be the day of salvation. This is the day you've made, Lord, and I pray we'll embrace it. Jesus, thank you for being with us every step of the way. I pray we will worship you in this place. I pray we will worship and serve you as we leave this place. Oh, Jesus, you are God. You are Lord. You are Savior. I pray we'll worship you. And I pray any in this room that need to trust you, I pray they do so today. I pray that any watching online or on television, they would email us and reach out to us so we can follow up with them and we can... Walk alongside one another as we follow you, Jesus, as our Lord. Lord Jesus, we love you and we're thankful for you. Thank you for your word. We look forward to hearing you speak to us in the weeks ahead. In Jesus' name we ask it, amen. Let's worship him. You come to Jesus. You can come and pray. You may want to come and pray for a loved one. Pray for someone that you know needs Jesus. Let's worship him.
answered prayers back then and you will answer now you are the same god you are the same god you were providing then you are providing now you are the same god you are the Amen. Well, seriously, I, I hope if you, if you don't already have something you're reading through the Bible, I, I kind of have another plan I'm doing, but I'm going to go back through the Gospel of John too. And, um, and on my Bible reading plan, you don't get to the Gospel of John until later on. But I would encourage you, go, take some time and just read through it. Don't, don't make it harder than it has to be, right? Just, just read through it and soak it up. Read it as a family, read it personally, read it at work over lunchtime, however you want to do it. But I invite you to join in with us and I ask you, pray about who you might also ask to invite us in this journey over the next handful of weeks as we see who Jesus says he is in his own words. Um, hey, look, there's a, there's a lot of great, wonderful things rolling. Um, in this week's at Grove, you'll see we've got a list of some of the groups and classes that meet. Um, you'll see there kind of a, a list of some prayers. There, top 10 prayer things we're believing God is able for. Now, there's, there are other things going on and even more things beginning to happen as we move into 2024. And I know Jordan would tell you she's working on trying to do what she can to get it on here. Sometimes, even this week, you're kind of like, man, there's a lot of stuff to try to put on a piece, a piece of paper. And so um, we're working on that. Um, just uh, keep, keep letting us know. And we're just... Uh, Tell you what, God is on the move, amen? I really believe he is. And, and we just gotta keep making much of him. We just gotta keep making it all about the Lord Jesus, not ourselves, and we just pray he'll get the glory and pray that he might use us in some form or fashion. Um, I was just glancing through here because I know in a couple weeks I'm, I'm meeting with some of our women's leaders, but I notice this prayer at 8 a.m. every Saturday. Uh, our women are, are having a, a prayer, they have a women's prayer meeting Every Saturday at 8 a.m., you enter through the main entrance and meet in the atrium. And then I know, Eric, the men kick back off this Wednesday and appreciate all of what you brothers are doing. And y'all start at 6, 6.30. Just thought, yeah, I want to make sure I had that right. Um, thought it was 6.30. I didn't think it was 6, 6.30. And they're right over here. So there's a lot going on uh, uh, that's not just on Sunday. But if you're not in a group or a class, check that out. Um, and we're seeing where God is on the move so we can maybe even see some, some new, uh, new ones of those started. And, and don't forget, thank those who are serving with our preschoolers and our children. It's exciting to see what God's doing with our students. Schools are back in or heading back in. I'm thinking right, Coach, let's feel start back tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken. Palatine, where my wife teaches, has already started back. Uh, Grove Christian School here. Be prayerful for the schools. You'll notice in the this week, um, Grove Christian, James River High, Bailey Bridge, Gaten Elementary schools are praying for. We're praying for the county of King and Queen. We have folks, some of you may be from King and Queen. We, I know we have folks on television that watch us from there and the Tuckhoe Village West 
uh, in Henrico. And then don't forget, don't forget, we're trying to emphasize some different mission activities each week. Brad and Jen McCowan are our church planner missionaries in Indianapolis. They're on our list to pray for this week at sbcb.org slash 52 Sundays. You'll see there 52 Sundays a year you have a missionary or church planner you can be praying.